What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I wanna talk about modules with Python. All right, in the last video we looked at functions. In this video, I wanna look at modules. But before we get started, if you like this video and wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee of just $27, which is insanely cheap. Okay, modules. Now, this is sort of a basic concept, but it can also be more advanced. And we've been using modules throughout this whole series. You didn't even realize it probably. At the very beginning, we added this OS module. We imported it, and then we use it to clear the screen. So that's a module. That's how you use them. They're very easy. Uh, in this video, I want to go in a little bit deeper and show you how to create your own modules and how to use those, uh, some of the things you can do. And I also want to look at some of the built-in modules that come with Python. So let's go ahead and do that first real quick. You just pull up a web browser and type in, I don't know, Python 3 module index. You get this right up at the top. It's This is the Python documentation. It's the Python module index for Python 3.7.3. If it's a different version number by the time you watch this video, Python's always updating and stuff, so that's no big deal. Whatever it is, just take a look at the, the latest one. And here we have this my, uh, module index, and this just lists all the modules that come with Python. And you can, I mean, that means you can use them without installing them. Like we did, let's see, earlier here, we just referenced them at the top, we imported it, and we can use it. So let's take a quick look at some of these. If you scroll down here, for instance, if we go down to O, we can see here's that OS one that we've been using. And what have we been doing with it? We've just been using os.system. So if I want to copy this and just search for that, I can see, boom, right here is os.system. If we click on it, we can read all about it, what it does, and all the good stuff. And uh, you can see there's a lot of stuff on this page, right? Some of these have a lot of, of information, a lot of things they can do. Some of them are very uh, short and, and small and there's not a whole lot there to learn, but they're all kind of cool. And I really recommend that you sort of just spend some time going through here and just looking, just seeing, first off, just kind of browse through and see if anything grabs your eye. If it's something you're interested in. If you need to use a calendar, well, there's a calendar module. Maybe you want to read about it. Uh, you know. Uh, let's see, we just kind of, I'm just eyeballing this. Here's a JSON, if you're going to be using JSON, JavaScript, object notation, uh, just mailbox, pickle, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> uh, if you want to use random numbers, here's the random module. So there's all kinds of stuff uh, that helps you create random numbers. Very cool secrets for generating uh, more secure random numbers for SSH keys and things like that, I think. SMTP, this is a email server. Wanna learn how to use that. Statistics, stat, if you're into math stuff, very cool. Check out the statistics. And you can see the statistics has mean, median, uh, you can get standard deviation and variance very easily. Very, very cool. And we already know how to use all of these things. You know, to use, for instance, statistics, you just would come over to your thing here and you would go import statistics, right? And that's it. Now you can start using it as per the instructions on that screen. So very powerful stuff and very easy to use. So spend some time going through there, read through some of them. And I recommend you really find something that you're interested in there and learn all about it, everything there is. If you're interested in random numbers, learn everything you can on that page about random numbers and then start playing with it. And that's you know how we learn these things. And very, very cool. So those are the built-in modules. Like I said, we can create our own modules and it's actually really, really easy. So I'm gonna just come up here and create a new file. And let's create that namer. Do we do a namer? or what do we call it, name it? I will do a namer. Create a namer module. And right off the bat, I'm gonna save this as, and we wanna save this in the same directory where our other file is. So we're in this Python stuff directory. 
And I'm just going to call this namer.py. Make sure this is Python. Okay. It looks like it did not get saved as Python. Let's try it again. File, save as. And then delete this one. Namer.py. Just type it in. All right. There we go. The color's changed. And now. I know we did return before, but I'm just going to print out a uh, hello there name. And of course, we need to pass in name. All right, so I'm just going to save this. Now, this is just a Python script we've just created, right? Just a regular Python file. And it has this function, the namer function. And you know what? I'm going to change this to name it. Yeah. Name it. Nam it. <laughs> I don't know. Save this. Now, to use this, we can import this just like we've imported everything, all our other modules import, and we call namer, the name of the file, right? Now, we can call uh, from namer dot name it. And then we can pass in john, right? So from namer, which is the name of the file namer dot pi, we want to reference the name it function, which is this right here. And you notice we've just put a, a period, a dot. This is a very object oriented type of thing to do that you can do with Python. When you want to use something inside of something else, you just dot and then put the name of the thing. So if we save this, come back over to our command line and run this, it says hello there, John. And we could, you know, change this to Bob, <laughs> save it, run it again. Hello there, Bob. Now, that's one way to do it. And that's definitely a way to do it. But this can get a little confusing from namer, name it, we can actually change this around up here, we can go from namer, import name it. And then get rid of this, we don't need that. So from this line, we're doing the same thing we're importing, but here we're importing something specific. In our case, this name it function, we're importing name it from namer. And now from now on, we can just reference it by referencing the function name, like we would always, right? So if we save this, actually, let's change this to Mary. Save it. Run it. Hello there, Mary, very cool and very easy. Now there's lots of different ways you can bring in code from other programs, treating them as a module and just importing them like that is probably the easiest in my mind. And uh, very cool. So, you know, it's a good idea to break apart your code. So if you've got a big function, that's, you know, a lot of code, you might break that off into another file, and then just import it like you would any module. And it, it helps keep your code cleaner. Um, you know, and it's, it's obvious what we're doing here, we're from namer, which is in this directory, we're just importing this name it function. Here, there's a, a placeholder variable, we're passing Mary into that placeholder variable, and then running the function, and it returns this print escape. So pretty simple, but very, very powerful. And it's just sort of a way to extend things. And, uh, you know, like I said, break up your code, or you can use Python's built in functions or modules, I should say from that page we looked at, and uh, be sure to take a look at that. It's at this URL right here, I'll put a link to this in the video below, or just go to Google and type in Python three module index, and you'll get this thing. Uh, but check it out. There's a lot of stuff in here. And some of it's boring, some of it's stupid, most of it you'll never need. But help us from manipulating HTML, HTML status codes, very cool, very interesting stuff, all kinds of cool stuff. And like I said, read through these, and something might catch your eye something you're interested in, right? Um, look up pickle tools, see what the what in the world that one is. Uh, let's see, Q random, that's a good one. Run pi, locate and run Python modules without importing them first. That's kind of interesting. Uh, Schlex, <laughs> socket, socket server, SQLite three is a database, we'll probably look at that later on. It's a, it's a basic database that comes built in with Python. Oh, it's amazing. It's not good for like big projects, but small to medium projects where you need just a lightweight database. Fantastic. It's built right in.
right into Python. Really easy to use. Uh, T. Kinter for creating um, graphical user interfaces. I've got a whole other course on that. Look at my YouTube channel. You can check that out. Very cool. Turtle demo. <laughs> Wave web browser. Easy to use controller for web browsers. That's probably pretty interesting. <laughs> all kinds of cool stuff. So those are modules. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. You see, you pay just $27 to access all my courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 50,000 students learning to code. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and we'll see you in the next video.